Hey guys, what's going on? SmartHelping.com here. We've got an insane upgrade to the original five-year SaaS startup model. This is the first financial model I've actually ever built, about uh, almost six years ago now. And it's had five or six updates, but not really a, an entire, I guess you could call this an, an entire makeover. So what I'm going to do is I'll explain really quick, like the base model which is um, basically basically it had some formatting convention updates and um, I cleaned up some things and then I'll go into all the updates which we've got um, financial statement additions before we just had monthly and annual P&L details which were not really formalized and we had a, a an executive summary that was just an annual but we've added full um, income statement balance sheet uh, cash flow statement, we've added uh, capex, we've updated some of the formatting for terminal value, and we've added a startup cost module, so all, <coughs> all kinds of stuff. Also, we added a global control, which didn't have, this was non-existent before, so at the, at the base level, we still have the same assumption schedule for revenue, which you can define up to four, um, four customer tiers for your SaaS business, the start month of each one, the starting sub count or customer count, the monthly percentage of growth of that over time, the average monthly churn over time, the average revenue per account over time, and one-time revenue on sign up per account if applicable. And obviously you could zero out, zero out anything that doesn't matter. And then I updated, so this, coloring i tried to make the coloring more professional and also all the editable cells are now light yellow with blue text which is all, what i do on all my new models this model had not had that um in it so now it does uh cost assumptions very simple if you remember the very first iteration of this just had percentages defined for all the cost categories um after a couple people said they wanted to hard code in the costs um that was an update, but it's very simple. This is one of the most uh, the most simplistic way to define your operating expenses is you're defining the total monthly cost of each cost category, and you could change it over time. Startup costs, pretty straightforward. This will flow right through to the um, year zero in the monthly P&L detail and month one in the income statement cap table this is a new addition so this is really cool um, we've got number of shares so first of all the the model now um, solves for minimum equity needed based on the minimum cash position and then you, that will flow through to show you how much you need to raise and then you could put in rate raise amounts up to 20 slots for outside investors up to 20 slots for um, founders operators employees and then they're resulting and they don't this could be zero it doesn't funds do not have to be contributed to have equity and you could define the equity um, common preferred a preferred b up to three types or you might just have all common shares that's fine and then this does all the math to show uh, ownership of each entity uh, and then the distribution schedule was added as well, and I'm pulling from that to get each um, entity's cash flow in, in and out and their internal rate of return. Uh, CapEx is way more in-depth. You could define if you're spending money on, let's say, computer equipment or anything that you want to depreciate, you could enter it in here, the useful life, um, the, the month of the expenditure, Row three is always for building, and if you don't have any, if you're renting or this is not applicable, you just just uh, zero out these in, uh, input cells. Terminal value is going to be important for, um, so all this is defined elsewhere except for this input right here for percentage as extraordinary income. So if you've defined an exit multiple here, if you put something besides the zero, it will flow over the terminal value and give you uh, based on the last month's uh, 
annualized or based based on the last 12 month run rate and that multiple will give you some exit value if you say 95 percent for extraordinary income that means the other five percent is going to go towards anything that was put into capex um, against what its book value is and that's only done for tax purposes um, because capital gains tax is likely different than your effective tax rate if you don't have any capex <laughs> you would just put 100 percent here and then that all flows to um, other comprehensive income debt schedule is pretty straightforward if you're gonna um, raise any funds through debt it'll go here flows through um, on the exit month if there was a multiple defined then it will have an exit month pop in here and whenever the X month happens, it will assume this debt is repaid. If not, if if there is no multiple, then it just runs through to the end of the template or the end of the, the timeline of the model. So that's all the inputs. Next we have got income statement. And I've got groupings on all this. So if you want to slide it up just see the high level items you can we've got income statement monthly income statement annual just a formal way we've got all our sanity checks in here balance sheet monthly balance sheet annual all our checks in there cash flow statement monthly cash flow statement annual and then we come distributions. This was another added um, summary of cash in and out, as well as equity contributed and the distributions. This is what's going over to the uh, cap table for uh, for the investor versus the um, or investor pool outside investor pool versus inside investor pool or insiders of the company. And there's also discounted cash flow analysis here, uh, net present value, internal rate of return. We've got some visuals. Uh, this is just for the general business operations, revenues, EBITDA, financing and running cash balance, annual subscriber summary over time, ending monthly recurring revenue by pricing tier, annual revenue per sales and marketing costs, uh, customer acquisition cost, average lifetime value per customer, lifetime value to CAC ratio, months to pay back CAC. Then we've got an executive summary, which is kind of like, uh, it's kind of like a roll up of the financial, like a uh, income statement and cash flow and just shows you some high level items and some visualizations as well as uh, some KPIs down here. Now this is the original uh, monthly P&L and it just shows each subscriber. It shows more detail, like the subscriber counts and their monthly recurring revenues over time, uh, as well as one-time revenues, consolidates it all, shows the expenses, and then other cash flow items. And then you can see we've put balance checks in here to make sure this matches exactly with the income statement and balance sheet and cash flow statements. So there's checks here. back up here five-year annual P&L detail same thing as a monthly just on an annual basis and then here's checks against the balance sheet make sure it matches because it should be the same thing when you add everything up and then we got evaluation sensitivity based on year one through five run rates which is just a supplemental schedule and that's it so the model's supposed to be built to be used pretty quickly, but I've now added a lot more value to the template. It's still going to be $45. It's very affordable. And um, you can get it at smarthelping.com. The link will be in the description box below. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one.